Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen on Spectre today with an Abaddon boxing and I have for you two surprise items. The first one, there's a uh, short story behind it. When I received my Shanling UA2, uh, it never quite worked right out of the box. I always had the problem that I couldn't press the gain button, like nothing happened. And sometimes there was also this weird like disturbance noises in the sound when I just used it, like I didn't need to do anything. Just plopped it on my table and <laughs> disturbance. Uh, and so I did order the Hibi FC4 as replacement. So we take a look at that and behind it, I don't know why the packaging is so huge. Let's just remove some of the packaging material here. I have the, do we even get a name, right? Yes, I have the Sure EG07M. Uh -huh, yes, it's Impulse V Emotion. Okay, not quite sure what that's supposed to mean, but I guess, yes, Impulse the Emotion. Mm -hmm. This is a bit shrink wrapped. Let's already unshrink wrap it. Whoop. But first, we unbox the FC4 because that is just a. Uh, it's just a dongle. It's, uh, there's nothing special about it. Like It's just like any other dongle. Whoop. So remove that. And let's take a look at the FC4. So packaging wise, it almost looks identical with what the uh, Shining UA2 came. Like almost the same dimensions, the same style. Like I don't think any producer at this price point or in these dongles probably thought, hey, we can make something unique. Let's just go black cardboard. Which is not bad, but uh, also not very unique. Beep. Then let's get this classic out of the way. Yes, USB headphone amplifier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then let's push that out. Yeah, that's very close to what the UA2 looked like. And how is this opened? On this side it is. Oh, yeah, that's also sort of similar how it opens. The gold printing wall does look pretty good. And then we got to the dongle here. And that is dimension wise also pretty much identical with what the UA2 from Shanling looked like. Like it's a bit more, like it has been more edges. The, U, uh, the UA2 is maybe a bit smaller because it's more rounded. I oh, yeah, and of course it has 4.4 millimeters and 3.5 instead of uh, 3.5 and 2.5 millimeter. So it is a bit bigger and I think it also feels a bit chunkier in the hand. And then you also get a volume control here, which I'm curious if this is supposed to be volume control only of this uh, dongle here or if it's volume control of the device. I think there was also some option somewhere where you can like at least change settings there. Not entirely sure. So yeah, generally USB-C detachable. That is a must have and I would never buy a dongle that does not have detachable USB-C because if for whatever reason your USB cable does die, which can happen quite some time, then you are screwed. And uh, yeah, replaceable cable of course uh, mitigates that fact or even avoids it completely because you can just replace your cable and you will be okay. When we have an USB-C cable, let just also unbox that. That seems to be pretty much back standard, like nothing special here. Yep. Yeah, that's like in standard. Ooh, this is a bit, a bit too long, I think, for mobile usage. Like that is like 20 centimeters. Not sure if that is right call for mobile. And also the strain release here is not releasing any strain like literally zero strain release with this thing. It's just, it's it's plastic. It's it's not, this is rubber, no, it's plastic. So that's pretty useless. Um, yeah, so just USB cable. And it's not even USB-C to USB-C, which would you you'd use on a smartphone? Oh wait, ah, I correct myself. You still get a mobile USB-C to USB-C cable here. Very, uh, wait, come on, wait, doesn't want to make sharp. Eh. Smartphone is doing weird stuff. So yeah, you get an USB-C to USB-C as well. This would be the smartphone one. Let's just give it a plug in. That's not very well in here. 
eh, not a fan of this USB connection. The UA2 was much more like solid in there. This is like even not sure whether it's visible, but if I just rock it, you can see it's rocking a bit in the port. I'm not a fan of that. Uh, however, what I'm a fan of, I can see the screws here. That is a nice touch. So I think if for whatever reason, like I don't really think this will get damaged because there's no battery in here, like really no deteriorating components, but this looks like to be maintainable. So you can just unscrew those boys and maybe do something with it. That's nice touch because UA2 did not look like it had any serviceable parts from the user side. And this one could at least be repairable, at least from judging from the screws. Make music more musical. Okay, I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean, but yeah. This user's manual showing how it's used, QC, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's remove that garbage. I mean, it's not garbage, but uh, for, uh, price performance uh, or price wise, it's definitely cheaper than what we are now looking at. So then let's take a look at the AJ07M, another of the very uh, hyped tribrids. And this one, I'm not sure which direction is supposed to be opened. Oh no, okay, is it? Okay, I think it's still sealed here because you got this. Great, great sure. Do you see that? You see that? That's how it's supposed to work. Yeah, of course. Mm hmm. You have already pack it, glue it completely, and then you can't open it because my opening strip is basically garbage. Ugh. Not a good start, not a good start, I got to say. But it additionally comes wrapped again. Hmm. So, has that going for it? AJ07M! Mm -hmm. So, it definitely is well packed. I got to give it that. Like, it comes already like sealed in bubble foil. And then it's bubble foil again. So it will definitely not get damaged. Hmm. We even get a frequency response printed at the back. It does not seem to say though well with what uh, measuring device it has been recorded, but this looks pretty much like, uh, also what the real graph would look like uh, because this is not new, right? It's already been out for like a year or so. So I got the silver version in I think 3.5 millimeters. Impulse V motion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's see, oh, okay, can't remove it because we're still in sealing here. Let's grab my knife again for a moment and cut through the seal. At least that is a like, unique packaging idea. Usually it's completely wrapped over, but here there's a bit uh, at the bottom missing, so you can just pull it off. And then you have a plain cardboard box with the sure symbol on here. I like that it has less branding than the one, for instance, on the S12, which currently is my uh, price performance uh, favorite. And then you open this top-wise, thin layer here, nice presentation. Mm -hmm. Then we got directly here the IMs and here the manual mass product version. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, we get the story. Yeah, I'm very interested in this story. Oh yes, very, very interested. Mm. Extremely interested, tell me more. Okay, let's ignore this for a moment. Let's see what accessories we get. So, we have foam tips. A, yeah, like two L and one M, the res res respectively version. That's nice touch. It uh, looked like could be the same ones that come with the uh, S12 as well. And when we get different tips, let's just remove the smaller ones here to see what difference those make. Okay, so this is both medium white bore. This one here, this one is softer to the touch. This one is a bit uh, more sturdy. And you can also see that the outlet is a bit different, right? This one is just in straight tube. This one slightly like bends toward the outside, like a bit of a funnel shape at the end. Um, they are both like on the, sm like this is S, right? This one looks to be smaller. I would probably take this one if I decide to use them. Um, but this is pretty slippery, while this one is not as slippery. So I'm not sure how well this would like just stay in your ear. 
But generally, decent selection of tips. <laughs> Let's look at the casing. <laughs> oh my god, that's hefty boy. Oh, this is uh, metal, like it's completely aluminium, like aluminium all over. I think this could be inspired by what, Empire Yes, They also have these casings. Can hear it. And we get our cable inside and there's some branding at the bottom, but nice touch that they have a rubber ring around here. Silicon gear, very great. That's what you need. Then we get the cable and here a cleaning brush. You don't need the cleaning brush. I don't know why you would you. Let's take a look at the cable before we look at the IM. Quick stretching to make it a bit more smooth. Nee, not a smooth cable. Nee. Nee. Also, like like for this pricing, what the hell? Like what? This is this feels cheap. Like, no, this isn't cheap cable. Like even the strands are not like really thick. I'm not sure if you can see it here. That those are not thick strands. <sighs> Going up, up, up. Nee, I'm not a fan of the cable. Ooh, even the weaving here is not well done until the top. Oof. Uh, I gotta say I'm a bit disappointed here. Splitter, just no regular splitter, and the cable though is the same thickness at least on top. So you get that, then you got ear hooks, and let's quickly check rubberization. That's totally okay, like not thickly rubber coated. Two pin, but in a 45 degree angle, that's a bit of an odd one. And then chin slider, let's just slide it. Oh, that's very smooth, That, that that's not going to stay in place. <laughs> nope. Okay, so um, not a fan of the cable, like really not. Then last but not least, let's take a look at the IAMs. Okay, metal shell, is it steel? I think it's steel, it's relatively heavy. See the serial number, there's a venting port here, it says L. You can go around like it's very smooth frosted. Two pin connector, regular one, relatively flush, like maybe just ever so slightly recessed. Then we have the printing at the back which does look pretty good in real life. I got to be honest, I expected a bit worse. I mean, let's come to the nozzle. That's relatively short nozzle. Good for my ear canal because it still comes in semi custom shape, but I think for others it could maybe be a bit too short. I got to do my measurements, including the uh, yeah, additional extrusion of the shell, but that could be a bit too short for some. And then we have the grill in front, just regular aluminum grill here. Seems to be held in place nicely. This looks like well put in, which expect at this price point. Um, the only thing I'm a bit afraid of, there's no front front vent here. That could mean there's driver flex because most of the time you need a front port to like really prevent driver flex. At least most items that I've heard that only had a back port here usually had some driver flex. So I'm a bit skeptical there. Okay, but uh, I think that's unboxing so far. Um, not a great fan of the cable, I got to be honest. For this price point, I just expect better. Like that's just, it's not good. Uh, but packaging and accessories here do look like they are like, somewhat price appropriate. Although, I'm not a fan of an aluminium case. Like, this is a very, very hefty point in terms of weight. And uh, if you throw this in your bag, you can damage other things. Uh, don't really like it. But uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, if you have any uh, feedback, if you have questions, if you have criticisms, if you have IEM recommendations, please leave a comment. End of this. Don't spec door.